Brethren and sisters, believing that the instruction of President Woodruff concerning the completion of the Salt Lake Temple is the word of the Lord unto us, I propose that this assemblage pledge themselves collectively and individually to complete the work on the interior of this temple, that the dedication may take place one year hence, on the sixth day of April, 1893, 40 years to the day of the laying of the cornerstones of this temple. So the capstone ceremony marked the completion of the stonework on the temple. That's right. All the scaffolding was removed and the attention was turned to finishing and decorating the interior of the building. With only one year to complete it? Oh, yes. Practical experienced men had declared to me that three years, too, at the very least, was required to complete the work on the temple. Nevertheless, every class of skilled artisans necessary were brought into service. These were men and women who consecrated their time and talents, many at great sacrifice. They may never be known or receive worldly credit, yet the beauty of their work will stand as a testimony of their devotion, faith, and love of God. The speed with which the work progressed was nothing short of miraculous. But the work on the interior was completed only earlier this evening, was it not? Not a moment too soon, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Thank you for your interview, President. You've given me much to write and think about.
Good morning, brethren. Good morning, President. Well, this is the day we've been waiting for. The weather's turned a bit nasty. Well, I don't suppose that should come as a surprise. Brethren, I think I should like to have a few words with our friend. I'll join you momentarily, if you would. Of course, President. If you should need any help, President. Thank you, Joseph. I'll be fine. Well, let's go in. Good morning. Oh, good morning, President. You're here quite early, Mr. Callahan. Well, wanted to see what I could of dedication. And what do you see? Don't know quite how to write about all this. So, this is what Brigham Young saw all those many years ago, and in the middle of a desert wilderness, no less. We stood not far from here. I wish you could join us inside, Brother Callahan. I too, President. Then, perhaps someday, friend. Yes. Perhaps. That was the last I ever saw of President Wilford Woodruff. As I watched this servant of the Lord walk back to the temple, I was reminded of something he had mentioned the night before, almost in passing. When the saints first petitioned for statehood back in 1850, they wished to call their state Deseret. But one senator, not too favorably disposed towards Mormons, decided that they should have the name Utah after the Ute Indians. It was not until years later that I came across the meaning of the word Utah. It means top of the mountains. And I thought of the words of the prophet Isaiah. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And all nations shall flow unto it. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer.